Hey guys, we're back with another song story and about half of the comments on the last video were about the fork microphone and uh, somebody rightly so commented that they were very worried that I might poke myself so I switched it for a spoon this time. I hope that's okay. I'm gonna show some footage of, I guess, a little morning routine while I talk about this song and the song today is No One Like You. There's no one like you, no one like you, girl. Similar to Keeper, No One Like You is actually one of the last songs that I wrote for the album. In fact, it was probably the very last song. And this song is a very telling example of the creative procrastinator side of me that really needs a deadline to get things done. I remember when I was traveling in Korea and it was about a month before the album was due to come out and I still hadn't uploaded the songs to distribution because I hadn't finished this one yet. And so my friend Chris from Wings Music, he sent me a very nice text and he was like, hey man, if we wanna hit this release date that you've announced, we need to upload this like tomorrow. <laughs> and because of the time zones, this was already midnight in Korea. So I was sitting there in my hotel room. I had my laptop and my AirPods and that was it. And I finished producing this song in bed at 2 a.m. <laughs> What's funny is if you listen to the end of the song, that was the part I was trying to finish and I really wanted it to sound big and epic and all I had with me was my laptop. And so I couldn't record guitars. I couldn't record like real piano because all I could do is play on my laptop typing keyboard, which just wasn't gonna sound very realistic for piano sounds. So I decided to work with my limitations and use very sustained things like synths, horns, strings, and just play everything in literally on my laptop keyboard. So I finished the song, I mixed it on my AirPods, which if there are any producers listening, you're probably crying right now, but you know, it was what it was. And then I messaged my friend Tim who mastered the album and I said to him, hey man, I'm really sorry, but if I send you this song right now, is there any chance you can finish the master by the end of the day? This was like afternoon in the UK at this point. And he very graciously said yes. I sent him the song and went to sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, there was the mastered song in my inbox, which meant I could get all of the album together and upload it and send it to Chris, all before Chris even woke up because I was still on Asia time. So the time zones actually worked out in my favor this time around, but... I wanted this song to feel like floating. I wanted it to be light and airy and dreamy and spacious. And I was inspired by a bunch of different songs, but one in particular is called Frost by a guy called Andris Matson. I remember this cropping up on my Spotify playlist one day and I was like, what is this? This is beautiful. And what really stood out to me, as well as the atmosphere and the overall feel of the song, was the way that it had this like piano chord kind of push at the beginning and then there's almost a call and response with the vocal melody. So the piano comes in, then the vocal comes in. And so I wanted to try a song like that where there's kind of call and response between the piano and the vocal. So I tried out some different chord progressions. I ended up landing on just these three chords, A, B minor, E minor, like dun, dun, dun. I wanted the melody to have this very elongated, floaty, you know, just long drawn out syllables rather than something really choppy. So I sat with this loop of chords for a while and in the end I was like, I need a way out of these three chords and I found this new progression that just had a bit more space and a bit more movement and I remember coming up with the melody and the chorus of this in the car. So I have this voice memo where I figured out a melody and some lyrics to fit along with this chord progression. Lord, you are unchangeable, slow to anger, rich in love, gracious and compassionate. There's no one like you, no one like you. I think the words are a little different in the final version, but you can hear the idea was there. But I wanted it to be kind of a doxology, this very vertical description of who God is and his attributes and character. A lot of this comes from Psalm 86. Uh, in verse 15, it says, You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. This is actually mentioned in Exodus as well, but you know, very descriptive of the character and nature of God. I won't go through every line in this song, but one of the lines I do get some comments about sometimes is, Lord, you are unsearchable. And people ask, what does that mean? Because 
aren't we supposed to search God out? Why would he be unsearchable? I understand the question. Um, this line is inspired by Psalm 145 verse 3. It says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, which is the opening line of the song. His greatness is unsearchable. Now, some versions say his greatness no one can fathom or no one can measure his greatness. The amplified version, which likes to add some extra words in, is quite helpful. It says, his greatness is so vast and profound as to be unsearchable, in brackets, incomprehensible to man. There's another word theologians use sometimes, which is inscrutable, which means literally impossible to understand or fully interpret, uh, enigmatic, mysterious. A.W. Tozer talks about this in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy. He actually says that if all that God is was able to fit inside the human mind, then he wouldn't really be God because God is in this whole other category called uncreated and we are the created. He's the creator, we are the created. And so he is so beyond the comprehension of limited created human minds. Like we can understand certain things about God, but will we ever fully grasp everything that God is? No, we can't, it's impossible because he's so beyond what can fit inside our human brains. He's just so much bigger, so much greater, so much more vast and eternal in all of his attributes. And so that's what I was trying to get across in this line. And so should we search God out? Yes, 100%. And he actually invites us to search him out and get to know him. But will we ever fully be able to comprehend all that God is? Mm -mm. Ain't gonna happen. And so I guess I could have sang, Lord, you are unable to be fully searched out by the limited human mind, but unsearchable was a bit more succinct and it is in Psalm 145. So the end of the song is one of my favorite parts and it's literally a line from Habakkuk 2.14. It says, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is one of my all time favorite verses in the Bible, if you're allowed to have favorites. But I think what I'm most passionate about really is the knowledge of God. It's the reason I write songs in so many ways is that I want to know God for myself. I want to go deep in exploring the knowledge of who God is. And I also want other people to know who God is. And so I write out of experience of knowing him and trying to discover more of who he is and search him out through that experience, try and write something that helps other people to see that. And maybe we get just a little glimpse of God in a way that we didn't see him before. And that searching really just looks like sitting with the word by the spirit and like speaking to God about God and asking him to reveal himself to us through his word, through scripture. And um, that's how we get to know him more in our life. And so the knowledge of God is going global. It's gonna go viral. It will cover the earth. And I like that. So I thought I'd sing about it. <laughs> Now, I can't talk about this song without talking about verse two, featuring my good friend, John Mark Pantana, who is just an amazing person to work with. I purposely left space in this song in verse two, and I wanted to send this to John Mark. And when I sent it to him, he sent me back three different ideas for the second verse, and they were all so beautiful that I actually couldn't pick one. <laughs> I kept listening to all three, and I was like, I want all of them to be in there because they sound so good. But you know, the deadline strikes again because I had booked a studio session where we were going to record like some live versions of songs from this album and some old ones, um, which are on my YouTube channel here. You may have seen some of them. If not, go check them out. And there's actually a couple more songs coming. So keep an eye out for that plug over. But I was sitting there the night before we were going to go and record this session. And I was like, I need to pick a version of this second verse because I have to sing it tomorrow and we need to pin it down. So. I messaged John Mark and I was like, hey man, I'm recording this song tomorrow, so like, let's pick one of these and like really nail it down and get the part. And we both agreed that we liked, I think it was his third take the best. And so we ended up going with that one. But I wanted to play you a little sneak peek of one of the versions that could have been, just to hear like how good some of these ideas he was sending through. You see my world with compassion. Yeah, that's the song. That's No One Like You. And I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit of the process and the story. And I will be continuing this series. I did realize after I uploaded the last video, I've actually already done the making of Low and Always Will Be, I think. And so I might as well just include those in this series because it doesn't make sense to tell 
the same story again. But I will be going through all the other songs that I haven't already made a song story video of. Um, so keep an eye out for those, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.